Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Jared with One Earth Mushrooms. So I've been trying to find a way to do grain spawn without pressure cooking. Um, and I figured some people out there might want to find a way to do grain spawn if they don't have a pressure cooker. Usually it's pretty much impossible to get a sterile environment without a pressure cooker. But I came across this old post on the shroomery of a guy named Karsten. He's doing lacto ferments for his grain spawn. Uh, so I figured I'd give it a shot. It's actually pretty simple. Basically you just soak the grain for 24 hours um, and then boil it for a few minutes to kill off the seeds so they don't germinate. And then you allow it to lacto ferment in open air. So lacto ferment is basically just allowing the yeast and bacteria that's in the air to colonize uh, and create lactic acid and then that creates uh, a really low pH environment that kills off the rest of the bacteria. So I figured I'd give it a shot and for this I'm just going to use corn. I'm just using two pint jars here and I'm going to fill them up about a quarter of the way with the corn and then I added water and allowed it to sit for about 24 hours. After 24 hours, I brought it over to the stove and gave it a quick boil. And again, this is just to kill off the seeds so that they don't germinate, um, because they will try to germinate if you just let them sit in water for too long without boiling them. Once it came up to a boil, I let it boil at a low simmer for 20 minutes. I strained off the water from that boil and then added the corn back into the jars. Again, this little funnel that I built is coming in super handy with every little project I do. Super easy to build and I'll put a link above, go check that out. I just added some cold clean water back into it, filled the jars about three quarters of the way up with water. And for this, I'm just using regular old wide mouth lids with a hole drilled in the middle. I'm not going to cover the hole up. I'm just going to leave it uncovered and allow bacteria and yeast to naturally form in there. So by day two, the water's already getting a little bit cloudy and bubbles are starting to appear in the corn. By day six, I started to see a yeast form on the top of one of the jars. And that kind of lasted throughout the entire project. One of the jars seemed to be getting better bacteria or more bacteria than the other one. So I just came back every couple days and removed the yeast layer with a spoon. By this point, the project is starting to smell a little bit like fermenting bread. If you've ever made a sourdough starter, you know what that smell is like. Um, and essentially we're using the same principles that a sourdough starter uses to lacto-ferment our grain. I took some of the yeast off of one jar and dumped it into the other jar in hopes that I could get equal bacteria distribution between the two. And that seemed to help a little bit. After two weeks, I started to see a lot more bubbles, and you can see just a few bubbles popping up here, but two weeks seemed to be about right to get it up into a bubbling state. I took the lids off the jars at two weeks. I noticed uh, there was a little friend that had joined us, and I'm guessing this is larvae from a fly or something. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but um, let me just flush them down the sink and again took all of our white foam off the top and kept on rolling. I would really recommend doing this not in the house because it does kind of smell a little bit. Uh, the smell wasn't super strong out in the garage especially with the lids on. Once I took the lids off and started mixing things up it smelled quite a bit. So definitely do this outside or somewhere that you don't mind smelling a little bit bad. On day 14, I also decided that I would mix the two together just to try to get the bacteria even between the two. And that actually worked out pretty well for me. In the bottom of the jars, there ended up being a lot of the starches that were washing off, and I just rinsed that out before I put the green back in.
I loaded the jars back up with the same water and I don't want to change the water out because the water is really what's driving our low pH here. After two days, I decided that I would try to take one jar and colonize it. So I grabbed, uh, and we'll just call it jar number one for this. I grabbed jar one and strained off the water. Um, but honestly, I didn't strain it very long. I just kind of let it sit for a few minutes and you can see the green is still really wet here. I'm using blue oyster liquid culture. So this is just mycelium that's been colonized in a nutritious liquid environment. And I bought these off of a guy on Etsy and you can see the name there on the syringe and I would actually recommend using him. He's got some pretty good stuff. I put about half of the 12 cc's into this jar. And at this point I am gonna cover it with my pore tape just to keep any insects out. This is the second jar, jar number two, and after about three and a half weeks, I started getting quite a few dead insects in here. So I figured it's probably stopped lacto-fermenting and it's reached a point where the pH is stable. I decided that I would try to inoculate jar number two at this point. With this one, I wanted to get it a little bit more dry, so I strained off the water as much as I could. And then I moved it over to a pan to air dry for about an hour. This is similar to how I do other grain spawns um, in this way where I let it dry before I load it back into the jar. I'm gonna use the other half of the blue oyster syringe in this and I'm hoping that this one will end up colonizing Again, just covering the hole in the lid with micropore tape. Uh, so today is June 20th. I just wanted to give you guys an update on where I'm at with the Lacto Ferment project. I have my two jars here and see if I can focus it. So this jar I inoculated on June 10th, so 10 days ago. This jar I inoculated on June 3rd. Um, and I used blue oyster mushroom liquid culture on both of these. So this guy, it's looking kind of rough. So it's got a bunch of stuff kind of settling down to the bottom. Some of the spots here are looking like it's contamination. Um, I don't know what that is up there, but I think I'm just gonna toss this one, um, but I'm not giving up on the idea yet. Some more. Something growing there, you can see on the under, underside of the lid, it's got some pretty nasty stuff, so I'm not gonna even open it. But this guy here, so it's still looking nice and clean. Um, and if you remember, this is all open air, like I haven't done anything in any sterile environment. I did the lacto ferment in open air, um, inoculated open air, so this one's been 10 days and no contamination yet on it. But also no mycelium growth at all, no, any, no signs of any sort of growth, so. Um, I am going to drop some enoki uh, grain spawn that I have in here because that enoki is voracious. It eats anything. So um, we'll see how that works out. I had some leftover enoki grain spawn from a previous grow and I'm just going to dump all of this into jar number two here to see if we can get it to colonize. I broke it up as best I could by smashing it against my hand and it's still pretty chunky, but I'm just gonna dump it all in and see what happens. I rinsed the inside of the lid off and shook it up as best I could. I kind of overfilled it, so it was difficult to get it mixed really well. 
but we'll see what happens here. All right, so here we are two days after I inoculated with the Enoki spawn. And you can see that the corn is kind of scaring away any mycelium here. So the rye grain is, was pretty well colonized and it's trying to branch out into the corn, but I think the corn is just too acidic for it to do anything. However, I am not giving up on this. I'm gonna let it sit until it either contaminates like crazy or until that Enoki is able to colonize. So we'll see what happens. Um, I would not call this one a blowout success. Obviously, we didn't get the corn to colonize, but that's okay. Um, it was definitely a learning experience, and I figured out some things that I want to try next time. And check out how beautiful that Enoki mycelium is. Man, I really love Enoki. So I'm not ready to give up on this project yet. The results that we got from this time aren't exactly promising, but I'm gonna try it again, and I'm gonna use a different grain, so I'm gonna try it with rye grain. I'm also gonna lacto-ferment for less time. So in this case, um, I went until basically lacto-fermentation stopped, and I wanna try to get it a little bit before fermentation stops. Um, so kind of at that peak point where we saw the little larvae crawling around, and I think that was right around two weeks. Um, I think I'm gonna stop at that point this time. So I went a little bit past that with jar one. I think I was 16 days with jar one, and then I went over 20 days with jar two. So I'm gonna, again, do it in two different jars and do it at two different points. Um, but anyways, I, I'm not ready to give up on this project. I want to see it succeed because it is, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a cool way of getting sterilized or at least uh, pasteurized grain spawn. So, if anyone out there has experience with doing a lactation ferment, I would love to hear your input. Or if anyone just has any ideas for how we might be able to make this one succeed, throw a comment below or hit me up on Facebook or Instagram. Um, the links to those are both below in the description. And yeah, we'll see you around next time. Right on. Thanks, guys. Bye.